Hello, I'm Tony Guida. This is my New York. We begin this program with a quiz. Can you identify this man? You've seen him many times, but not often like this. A trademark article of clothing is missing. Hint, it's a bow tie. And yes, the man is Charles Osgood for 22 years on CBS Sunday Morning. His campfire offered welcome refuge from worldly tribulations, a comfort zone crackling with smart stories well told. Charles continues to provide cogent and sometimes cheeky commentary daily on the CBS radio network. It is called The Osgood File. You'll meet him next. I am so delighted to welcome to our program Charles Osgood. Good to see you. It's good to see you, Tony. Oh. And not on the radio at the moment. <laughs> um, Charles, as we said, just retired at, uh, after 22 glorious years as the, as the host of CBS Sunday Morning, which uh, in my estimation, and this is not because he's sitting across from me, uh, if you had asked me yesterday, I would tell you this, has been, I have always thought, since 1979 is the best program on television and uh, we'll talk later about my envy of you because I wish I had the job that you had for 22 years. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, Good. You know, I've, 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 I was going about to say I'm going back to radio, but I never left. I, the, the Asgard File is what it was, uh, except it used to be one show a day and now it's four. But what we call a show, laughingly, right. is, is a, like a two-minute piece. Yeah, two or three minutes. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about the Osgood file in, in a while, but I want to talk a little bit more about Sunday morning. What do you do with your Sundays these days? Well, it's not, people think that, that well, that, that's a great job to have. You know, you only work an hour and a half a week. But it, it takes a little more time than that. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, and I've, because I'm doing you know, 20 radio sh shows a a week. I have never tried to be the producer of Sunday morning. And I, I, they, they let me attend any meeting that I want to, but you soon wish you, you know, you wish you were doing something else. <laughs> it's a, it's <laughs> yeah, that's, as it is with most meetings. Yes. Yeah. So, so what, anyway, that's, uh, that's the, I, I, I'm, I'm still doing the, the work that I do for radio. Of course. Which was, but which, you, which, there was much, I, about 80% of my time has been spent on radio. Of course. But with Sunday morning, I, I mean, I recognize a lot of that is taped, a lot of what your introductions and things were taped. But you had to be there at least many Sunday mornings. And I'm wondering what, you know, wonder what you're doing with them now. You haven't done anything silly like take up golf or something. No, no. no. <laughs> I, but the Sunday morning starts at 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. If, we, if you're on, on that day, I, I would get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. And and I would not I would not write most of the script, but I would edit it all. Mm -hmm. In other words, sure. I, I I get sure. to try to put it the the way the way I would put it, and usually, it's it's appreciated by the uh, by the reporters who are actually the ones telling these stories, uh, right? Because they're all told, you got to cut it down. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's running. It's, <laughs> it's it's too long. Right. And of, of course, time is is all you've got. So. So, uh, if 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 I spent thirty seconds on the introduction, th 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 that's thirty se seconds that I'm taking out of their, <laughs> out of yeah. their piece. Right. Exactly. So, so uh, and I and I and I don't try to attend meetings which can be endless. About you know, well, we did a piece about like this that's sort of like this. Six Fourteen months. years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. That, that's right. Well, we already did that person. Well, yeah, that was, that was 20 years ago. So it, now, it's a, now the story is a different story. And I think one of the things that we get to do is uh, we, 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 we'll, we'll talk with somebody like uh, Keith Richards, mm -hmm. let's say, who's a fascinating interview. Yeah. He's, you know, he, he, he's a Connecticut country gentleman who, who, uh, whose favorite spot in the house is his, his personal library. Hard to imagine reader. from this guy we see on stage at 
70 something rock. And the, stone, and the stones are still working. I mean, they, yeah. you know, they, they, they tour and stuff like that, but that's, that's not who he is. And, and I think, you know, he, I think he and Mick Jagger uh, are, have had disputes over the, over, I mean, they're, they're very, very different kind of pe people, but, but they're still in such demand that I think if you know that you're going to be going on tour next month uh, and you're his age, uh, you know that you you have to you know don't Re let yourself just go to go to pieces. Yeah, relax in the library <laughs> yeah. in your Connecticut home. Yes, I was interested in hearing you say or reading that you said I can't think of anything that's given me more pleasure than Sunday morning. That I think is saying a lot given your extraordinary long career at CBS and varied career. I mean, you did many, many things at CBS. So to say that about Sunday morning really says a lot. What it's to be the anchor of Sunday morning is especially pleasurable because people do. If you're in television, people are going to say, oh, I watch you every day, even if you're not on it right. <laughs> every day. I still have people telling me they see me every day. <laughs> yeah, right. I haven't been on in years. <laughs> <laughs> well, but they, in their minds, though, they, that's, yeah, that's sure. what they do. Uh, but they don't say, they don't say, you know, you know, I really love you and love your work. What they say is, I love that show. I love Sunday morning. We had, we had somebody who was, that was one of the producers was leaving to go to the Evening News, which is a more prestigious kind of, you know, that's, that's, that's... Uh, it's supposedly the French. Yes, that's, I mean, that, oh, okay, so you I, put I words in, in, the, in the mouth of, at that time, Cronkite, or, right, or, right. or rather, or, or, or today, uh, Scott Pelley. But I, I think that, that it's the broadcast and what happens on the broadcast. That, that, and I loved Sunday morning way before I was, was doing it, exactly. and, I'm, and I and I I I expect that I I, I always will. So well, not, I said it. Yeah. I said at the outset, and I and I mean it sincerely. I, in 1979, this program came on the air with Charles Corral, the only other host before you, and now of course Jane Pauling. And I watched that show. Uh, on a Sunday in September 1979, and I was astounded. I had never seen anything like it. The elegance, the choice of stories, the way they were told, the, the assortment, the writing, the set. I mean, it was, and still is, the best program. Corralt had a way of, not, not only of choosing the, the right words, but he would order them differently. He, yeah. The first, the first thing he said on that first broadcast was, "Today starts something new." Mm. Yeah. I mean, most people would say something new starts today, or they would say, "We have something new today." Yeah. But today starts something new. The verb is diff right. in a different yeah. place than it, than it usually is, and he always. I, I don't know how you do this, but I guess if, he he was very good at it. He would take pauses that a person would take if they were trying to think of what the right word to say. Ah, but he already knew. He knew what he was going to yeah. say. He was reading it off a prompter. <laughs> <laughs> However, he wrote it, and he, want, he wanted to connect his brain with yours because that's the way that you, you have to pause when you speak, except these days everybody talks so fast and, and right. so bad that, that if you pause, somebody else is going to speak, <laughs> get interrupt. Yeah. They are, they are. They're going to do that. Well, um, I guess this is a good time for me to say and reveal that I envy, I envy Charles K, and I envy you, and now I envy Jane. Uh, I worked at CBS mostly in local, and I, I wanted to be on that show. I wanted your job. Uh, and when Richard Threlkeld was the cover, yes, a great CBS correspondent, Threlkeld for a while was the the uh, correspondent doing the cover story. Yes, uh, Richard and I were friends for a while, and I used to say to him, Richard, why don't you? It's time for you and Betsy to re retire yes. and go back to where you know they used to have a place over in Europe someplace. I want your job. I, you know, <laughs> if I can't get if I can't get Osgood's, you know, hosting. At least let me do the cover stories. Reporter, the, the, the CBS 
reporters who are very good. You know, it, it's hard to find anybody better than, than, than over, over the years than, yeah. than the CBS has had. And they always like to do pieces for Sunday morning because instead of, you know, we got a minute and a half, uh, you know, they, we, we've, we used to start off with the idea that we've got an hour and a half. It's a long right. show. But you have to have a lot of different pieces because you've got to put commercials in between them. That's, <laughs> that's what pays the bills. Uh, and I, and I, I think that that is, that is one, of the, one, of the, one of the great things about the broadcast is that we have the time to, to do things that there's simply no t on a, on a half-hour show. It used to be 15 minutes, remember, before the, sure. they expanded it from 15 right. minutes to, to a half an hour. And Corot in particular, was great at stopping like that <laughs> to think of the, the thing that he wanted to say. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it continues to be a marvel, and I'm glad CBS continues to have it on the air. I, I, I heard you say that television uh, scared you at first. You, you, were, you were afraid of, to go on television. Well, I had done radio for a million years. Yeah. And... I really liked working in radio uh, because it is the, it's been said that radio is the theater of the mind. And once you have a picture, the picture dictates what you have to say. And if you, on television, right. On television. And you say, why did, we, why did we say it that way? Well, because you want the picture to carry the story as much as you can. It's, it is a visual medium. But sometimes the picture that you have you, you, what you say has, has to be even awkward in order to justify what you're going to sure. say on the billboard exactly. that's, that's next to you, or, the, or that's 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 what we've named the show. I mean, no, name this particular piece, and every piece has a title. Right. And so, it, t it turns out you have you have to work with that title. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I know exactly. I mean, we're. I know exactly what you're talking about from years of reporting for television. You know, to get a minute 45 to tell the thing was a, was a huge amount of time. Yes. So if you could go to a Sunday morning and have three, four, five minutes, those, sometimes those cover stories run six and seven and eight minutes. That's right. Oh, my God, that's, that's, that's the Garden of Eden. And, you know, it's, uh, but, uh, but it's not just the time. It's it's the quality of the of the storytelling and it's the writing and it, it it's your writing your deliveries of the introductions and of course the pieces that that make up the show and there's a consistent elegance and 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 excellence. Sometimes the the, the reporter will write a suggested introduction, <laughs> yeah. which includes I'm, the things that he had to leave out of his piece, right. and and that's. It's, it's not that I don't want to do it their way, but, but I think you, you, what you should be doing is setting it up for them. So, yeah, tee so, it up. So, so, yes, that's right. And just, just tell the audience just enough so, so that the piece will be a, 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 a piece of art. Yeah. Well, and so many of them are. And um, I guess what helped you get... Uh, you said something about uh, your nervousness about television. Mike Wallace came oh. along with, with very uh, welcome advice. The first, the first show that I ever anchored, the first evening news show, was, uh, it was a Saturday night, and I was, I was substituting for Roger Mudd. Mm -hmm. And I had, I had ne never been made up before, ever. I, I, I had been in radio. And, no. Nobody ever put powder no. on your face before. No. <laughs> Although, you know, in the early days of radio, the announcers were dressed in uh, uh, formal wear. Yeah, tuxedos. tuxedos. I, I, that's a whole other story. I, I, when I found that out, I was blown well, away. But, but they, wa they wanted to, it to be an occasion. And, this, and, and when, in fact, when, C when CBS had, had, had its own uh, 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 Show on uh, on the on the on the other side. On, uh -huh. uh, uh, they they finally went back to that, and they had one guy who, who was wearing a tuxedo introduced all the pieces. <laughs> <laughs> but th th what did Mike Wallace tell you that that got you over your uh, well anxiety? After, well, it didn't happen overnight, but I, I, I it was the first show that I ever had ever done, and 
and I and I had known Mike because because we had a good mutual friend. And uh, he said, Charles, please come to my office on Monday morning and bring a copy of that show with you. He said, you need help. <laughs> Mike Guala? Yes. Oh. So I was, I was happy to get whatever help I could get. But he said, look, he said, he said I'm, I'm one of the people here that can, can I'm, I'm, I, I used to be an actor. So you have to be a little bit of an actor when you're there. You, if, even if you feel, I've never done this before, I, I hope I don't screw up too much. Uh, you, you still have to be an actor. And, right. and he said, sitting behind that desk, you looked as if you were a guy who had been sent into that room to empty the waste baskets. <laughs> and you were there emptying the waste baskets and you looked up and you saw Walter Cronkite's desk. And so, you went over to it and you, you sat down in the chair saying, I hope nobody sees me sitting in Walter Cronkite's chair. Right. Uh, and he said, that's what, so the public sees you. And if you don't think you belong there, they're not going to, the, the audience is going to think that you don't belong there. He said, but he said, I know, and so does everybody else at CBS News, that you can do this. This is like, should be like falling off a log for you. But he said, you, if, if you are, if you are, Worried. I mean, I, I, it's the old deer in the headlights kind exactly, of thing. Exactly. Exactly. It's like, and you you look f like frozen with <laughs> with uh, with fear. Yeah. I mean, it's. I remember. He, he, you know, it's very hard to talk to this thing that is a box. Yes. With lights on it and in a screen and think, oh no, it's not a box. I'm talking to somebody, a, a person, two a person. people, whatever. And especially, I mean, if your audience is like whatever the evening news was then, I mean, yeah. uh, millions. Uh, Sunday, it's, it's millions. But if you think that, then, you know, it's, yeah. it's like you're standing on a big stage and <laughs> you, you're about to, so now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, you do that old announcer thing. Yeah. Well, besides your, your, your skills in telling a story and in writing a story, you brought something to television that I think had probably not been there before, at least not to the extent that you brought it, and it's that thing you're wearing around your neck, a bow tie. Now, CBS Sunday Morning has been uh, gracious enough to allow us to use some of the, the clips from your final, from the final uh, CBS uh, Sunday Morning with Charlie, which was called Celebrating Charlie, as it should have been called. And here's a little bit about Charlie and the bow tie. Through the decades, he's worn a kaleidoscopic variety of bow ties that have captivated fans and colleagues alike. I've always wanted to do something as a reporter, okay? Okay. It's real. <laughs> it, is, it is not a clip-on. The tie is real, just like the man. That is uh, Meredith Vieira and you on the uh, morning news. And it, it, did you have any idea she was going to do that? No. No. Oh. But, uh, but, but, but it's, it's, it's not the only time that it's happened. Really? Um, and the first time I, I wore a bow tie, just, I just happened to, to, to wear, I wore a clip-on. Mm. And, and the writer on the broadcast was a terrific, terrific writer who always wore a bow tie. And he said, if you're going to wear a bow tie, do not wear a clip-on because it's too, it's too obviously pre-tied. And I said, well, I don't know how to tie it. So he, so he took his own tie off. Uh, escorted me into the men's room where there was a mirror. He stood behind me and he said, here's, here's how you do it. It's like a shoelace, first step, like that. And then, you know, tuck that back there and pull it through. And it, it doesn't take very long and you can do it. So I, I wore his tie that night. And why did you go to both ties? I mean, you had worn ties, obviously, and now you make this change. Did you just want to be different or? Actually, yes, the producer of the, of the broadcast after, after I wanted, which I just have, have, it was, people say, why do you wear, why, why does anybody wear, <laughs> wear a tie? Or if they, if they say, if you're not wearing a bow tie, I, I found that people would say, why, when oh, I wasn't not. wearing it. Yeah. So, so I wore it most of the time, it became a sort of a, a uniform for me. I, I read something that uh, you had seen, in, or somebody told you about a piece in a magazine called Success, back whenever, and uh, that piece in that magazine 
uh, uh, asserted that people distrust people, men who wear bow ties. I actually did, I followed up on that by, by going to see uh, a, 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 one, of the, one, of the, one, one of the big, big uh, designers at, at, mm -hmm. at the time. And he said that, 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 that he thought that that was true. They, they, they have actually measured, you know, people going in out of, out of, a, out of a doorway will, will, will uh, give much more, in other words, this must be an important person. If you're wearing a bow tie, they think this must be <laughs> an important the, the clown. <laughs> oh, a clown, I see. But, and I got the sense from reading that little anecdote that you sort of wanted to thumb your nose at that uh, convention, if, it, if you want to call it that, that, that men who wear bow ties are men you should distrust. No, but that, but that's, that's, that's really silly because Winston Churchill wore bow ties. Yeah. Edward R. Murrow on, on occasion would wear a bow tie. And if, if, there's, if there's a formal, you can look around you and everybody's <laughs> wearing a bow tie. Well, uh, I'm sure, or I hope, uh, many in our audience know of your facility for writing poems, doggerel, um, rhymes, and you wrote one about this idea of uh, bow ties and trust. Yes. Do you remember it? I don't. Here, <laughs> you deliver it because you can, only, you can do it better than any. For those who have lusted to be honored and trusted, a bow tie, I say, doesn't hurt. It isn't your tie that most people will eye. It's the big soup stain there on your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Kerhalt, vintage, I mean, Charles, Charles Osgood, we're channeling somebody else. You know, Charles Osgood, vintage. There, there's, I, 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 you, you, I don't know how much time you have, but it's... I, I, well, I, we have plenty. I was, I was uh, told when I got in one day that somebody had called in and said that if I did any more poems on the radio, that they were going to kill me. Really? Yes. A death threat over, over yeah, poetry? Over, yes, yes. Over dog, a death threat so over I, doggerel. I can I, just see the post headline. I, I told that to my friend Rich Cohen, who was the husband of Meredith, Meredith Vieira. Uh, he said, you know, he said, I think that if, if, if such, a, such a homicide took place, it would be, he, he would get off because it would be justifiable homicide. <laughs> <laughs> Did CBS ever say, Charlie, we don't like that look? Lose the bow tie. No, no. They, they never did. In fact, though, when when Harry Smith was doing the show, uh, he sometimes wore a bow tie. Yeah. And Howard Stringer, Sir Howard Stringer, he was not Sir at at that time, but when he was president of CBS News, he said we can't have a lot of you know every, everybody wearing a bow tie. So yeah. one, of you, one of you has got to stop. Right. I think Harry Smith, the great. Uh, anchor and in, in, in reporter for CBS uh, told a story about he wore a bow tie when yes. he was at CBS and somebody said no Harry that it's kind of like it's it's Osgood's franchise you, you <laughs> lose <them." laughs> well I think it's, it was not that so much I, I, as it was just that if you have if if, if if too many people are wearing bow ties that that it, 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 it's like somebody must have written a memo <laughs> yeah well, it's, that's kind of, I mean, we could do a whole other program about that, but let's not. Um, from the uh, final CBS Sunday morning celebrating Charlie, uh, here's a salute to Charlie from a fellow with a bow tie. When I heard that you were leaving, I thought, well, maybe, maybe there's a place for me on CBS Sunday morning. And then I realized that there are certain requirements that you have to be aware of. And I didn't know whether I could get those requirements done. Oh, hell, Charles, I can't do this. <laughs> You're a master at everything you do, including tying a bow tie. And I wish you all the very best. Tom Brokaw. <laughs> I was going to say, who is that guy? <laughs> well, I can't, we can't leave the subject of the bow tie without mentioning a couple of other things. One of them is the one that Charlie's wearing, and we'll come to that in a second. Well, no, let's get to it right now. The one you're wearing is a replica of the one you wore on that program. And tell the audience where this is going. 
we had a request from the Smithsonian to, uh, to, to, for, for the, whatever the, bro the, the one that I would use on the last broadcast, uh, if, if, if they could please have it, they were going to ha display it along with these 60 minutes. Oh, that's the... Uh, the stopwatch. The stopwatch. Yeah. They have the stopwatch, and now they're going to have... That's right. The Charles Osgood bow tie. Yes. We have a, I don't know if we showed it already, we have the close-up picture of the thing, and what, what you're seeing on that is the logo of Sunday morning, the sunburst. So next time I go to the Smithsonian, I'll be able to think about you. I'm sure that it, it, it probably takes the Smithsonian a while to, to create yeah. the, 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 the display for it. So, so somebody was assigned to do that. Here, take this watch and take this tie and show everybody, because it's part of, it's been part of Broadcast a history. lot of people's experience. Sure. Um, I saw you open a drawer at one of your homes, and in, I mean, it was a big drawer, and it was brimming with bow ties. How many bow ties do you think you have? I, I don't know, and people ask that question. I, really? I, I ought to take the time to, to, to no. actually count them, but, but that's, that's, and the way that usually works, by the way, <laughs> is, is I go fishing around for, I mean, by that time I already got a shirt on. So mm -hmm. I, I want something that, you know, it's not gonna clash. I think this clashes with that, by the way, now that I look at no, it. No, it doesn't I, at all. I, it looks fine. Uh, we're running out of time on this program, but I'm delighted to tell you that Charlie is coming back. And we got a lot to talk about, including his amazing career in radio. Um, Something you fell in love with as a child in, in Baltimore. Uh, radio was a, an escape. Uh, let's look at one more quickly. Let's look at one more piece from the, from the uh, Celebrating Charlie program on Sunday morning about radio. The FBI in peace. Radio was my window of the world, a, a world unto itself, a world more fantastic and more real than the world I saw every day in Baltimore. A fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Is there anything that you haven't got your finger in? Yes, a wedding ring. A wedding ring. <laughs> and Edgar Bergen, the only ventriloquist ever to succeed on radio. Shadow knows. I even knew what the shadow looked like, and he was invisible. Charlie Osgood narrating, uh, telling us in wonderful um, detail why radio was so special. Uh, you know, it might be summed up in that phrase about radio that it, what makes it so much more interesting than television is that the pictures are better. You know, Rod Serling uh, who, of The Twilight Zone, worked in radio and he worked in television and he'd say that you could you could sit down at your typewriter and write once there was a castle on a hill and a million ten million castles would be built in ten million right. minds you could you build your own castle you don't need somebody to, but he says that in television They'll some guy would come around and say what kind of a castle you wanted to a castle I'm yeah, sure yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we will show and talk a lot more with, with Charlie Osgood next time. And uh, I'm delighted he's agreed to come back. And in the meantime, Charles, we'll see you on the radio. Exactly. <laughs>